All right, so this is going to be a quick tutorial on how to do IRQs on the PIO and allow them to send up to the main CPU. So basically, a normal IRQ from the PIO is IRQ set zero. Now, if you want an interrupt to get up to the CPU, it has to be between zero and three. Um, to get up to CPU. Now there are an IRQ can be between zero, uh, zero and seven, but between four and seven, those are just internal. All right. So this is gonna go a little fast. So we're just gonna do a lot of like delays in here, a few delays, and I got a fancy little delay to make this really loop. So this is just, it's going to go really fast with these interrupts, so we're just going to slow this down a lot. Okay, now in the main, just have a simple function to set up our PIO and then just wait. Alright, so this function, all it takes is what PIO block you want to be on. It will grab the proper one and then it will switch between the PIO 1 IRQ 0 or the PIO 0 IRQ which is basically the on the CPU it's going to be the thing that actually calls your callback function all right which we'll talk down here um, this is all boilerplate just setting up the state machines and then setting the clock really low all right so here's the meat the first thing we have to do is we have to enable the interrupt on the PIO side. And that's what this does. It enables it the IRQ0 interrupt enable register to interrupt on a specific event. Uh, this is the breakdown. Mostly all we care about is these top four, which is the zero to three that we we're talking about over here. So this directly maps to these events here. Okay, so this will be interrupt 0, 1, 2, and 3. All right, now what we're doing here is we're saying the handler, which will go up to this function up here. And here we're enabling the interrupt on the CPU side. So this is setting the callback for this, which will enable this to actually run. So basically the sequence of events is enabling on the PIO side, the interrupt, specific interrupt you want to enable, then setting a handler and enabling that handler to actually run on the CPU side. Okay, and then at the bottom, we're just we're just in setting we're just telling the PIO to run. And in our callback, it's gonna be very simple. I'm just gonna be printing the the interrupt value. So this register right here is gonna be all the interrupts in your IRQ in bit orientation. So the first bit is going to be our first interrupt. Second bit is going to be the second interrupt if it's if it's hit, and so on and so forth. So all we're going to do is we're going to grab the index zero interrupt, and if it's set, we're going to clear it, and just for verification, we're just going to print it out. Oh, I don't need this. So now if we just build. And we open up potty. So we see we see our little uh, printf here. Now, if you didn't clear this, this interrupt would always hit indefinitely. Um, but this clear also clears the PIO. So we can do, uh, we'll do it right at the beginning, wait zero IRQ zero. 
So we're waiting until the IRQ zero gets to be zero. So, which we shouldn't see any difference whatsoever. Maybe a little sore, but um, this is entirely different than IRQ weight zero. What this does is it sets the IRQ, so it does this command, and then it waits until it's cleared. So I could replace this, I could replace these two statements above with just this one line, and it would essentially be equivocally the same. Okay, so um, if you want more interrupts, you can enable more interrupts. So this is the interrupt one, and we'll comment this out. So now we can do IRQ set one. And now we get two calls. Um, other things that you might see online is you don't need this IRQ clear. Um, this is only for software. The hardware are managed differently, basically. Um, let's see. Yeah, I think that's the gist, basically.